Good evening, everyone. Notice of this meeting stating the date, place, and time has been disseminated as required under the Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231, PL 1975. Copies of the agenda are also posted on the city's website and Linden TV for the public. This meeting is called to order. Mr. Clerk, can you please conduct a prayer and flag salute? God of the universe, look thou with favor upon these here assembled and bestow thy guidance upon the members of the governing body in their deliberations. This we ask in thy name, amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. In the event of an emergency, the proper method of exiting the council chambers is through the three doors in the rear of the room. Occupants should proceed down the staircase, out the front door, and move away from the area of the front steps. Any member of the public wishing to speak during the public comment session of the, at the end of the meeting, please sign in on the white sheets provided at the front of the room with your name and address. Please turn off all cell phones or place them on vibrate. If you must take a call, please leave the council chambers to do so. Mr. Clerk, can you please call the roll? Mrs. Ormond. Here. Javik. Present. Caldwell. Present. Mohammed. Present. Revis. Excused. Roman. Here. Strano. Here. Blaine. Here. Medina. Excused. Hudak. Here. Mrs. Yamakaitis. Here. Okay, can we have approval of the public session minutes of February 21st, 2023? Council President, I'd like to approve the minutes of the meeting and request a second. 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 Mrs. Ormond? Yes. Javik? Yes. Caldwell? Yes. Mohammed? Yes. Roman? Yes. Strano? Yes. Blaine? Yes. Hudak? Yes. Mrs. Yamakaitis? Yes. Okay, we have several presentations this evening. We're gonna start off with a proclamation uh, declaring April as Child Abuse Prevention Month. Okay, is there a representative here from CASA? Okay, would you please come to the podium, Mayor? So we have a proclamation here for Child Abuse Prevention Month, which is in April. Whereas the city of Linden in the state of New Jersey recognizes the problem of child abuse and neglect and is committed to helping the, its victims. And whereas court appointed special advocates, CASA of Union County recruits, trains, supports, and supervises community volunteers as advocates for children who have been removed from their homes due to neglect or abuse. And whereas, CASA has a record of public service protecting the safety and well-being of Union County's foster children, defending them from harm and ensuring they are provided with the court-ordered services they need. And whereas, CASA establishes and maintains effective relationships with the Family Court, the Division of Child Protection and Permanency, DCPP, Child Placement Review Board, Office of the Public Defender, Legal Aid, and other child-serving agency institutions in order to create a cooperative environment in which to best meet the needs of children. Now, therefore, I, Derek Armstead, Mayor of the City of Linden, do hereby proclaim the month of April 2023 as Child Abuse Prevention Month and also as Court Appointed Special Advocate of Union County Month in the city and urge all residents to become aware of the work and mission of CASA of Union County. Let it be known that we support the education efforts to raise awareness of the CASA program at the local level 
and the need for community members to provide a voice for the children in foster care. And it's signed by Mayor Derek Armstead. Okay, we have Heather here from CASA. Would you like to say a few words? I won't say it all, I promise. <laughs> I'll be quick. Um, Heather, I'm an uh, advocate supervisor at CASA of Union County. Um, uh, we want to thank you so much, Mayor and Council, for issuing this proclamation, bringing attention to CASA's mission to protect the best interests of local youth victims living in child welfare systems. This recognition is especially important now as April is National Child Abuse Prevention Month, a time when working with the working to further raise awareness about the youth we serve through blue flag displays, which Linden is hosting, um, along with other towns in Union County. When you see one, a sea of blue flags, we know each flag represents four youth in the child welfare system here at no fault of their own. It's critical these youth from birth to age 21 know we have their backs not just during April and Child Abuse Prevention Month, but every day. And asking towns to set up to host flags for the month is one way to remind these youth we see them, we hear them, and we support them during a time in their lives that should be relatively carefree. Not the reality they know. What they know is trauma, loss, and unknowns. Last but not least, we would like to thank our, your neighbors, um, our Linden volunteers, who I have one here with me tonight, Janet, who is actually one of my, uh, my advocates that I supervise. Um, we wanna thank the local residents who step up to train as child advocates with CASA of Union County and volunteer each day in the trenches, working with a youth or sibling set to ensure their needs are met, best interests protected, and they have constant caring adult in their corner during a time when the door to their lives seems ever revolving. Among these residents here tonight, like I said, is CASA volunteer Janet Bowe. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we got a picture. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Janet, can you come up? Many of us come from good families and we're very fortunate to have our families and we don't, we're not subject to some of the things that happen. There's groups like this that um, advocate for those who are less fortunate than we are and we really appreciate what you do, you know. So thank you for coming out this evening. Okay, Mayor. Okay. Your next well, presentation, Mayor, is gonna be for the Linden High School varsity basketball team. They won and group and all, all I can say to my State council sectional. members and colleagues here, they're lucky there's not a basketball game tonight because I wouldn't be here. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I proclaim myself as, as Lyndon's biggest fan, but I'd probably have to fight Mark Manitza over that title. <laughs> you know, no, we love our basketball, and um, I, I can say this. After a couple down seasons, I was very happy to say that Lyndon basketball is back in a big way. I want you all, you know, we all have our little um, things that we do. I, I happen to wear the same pair of underwear every time you play. Just, uh. <laughs> the, I call them, I call them my, uh. my, my good luck underwear. No, 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 I'm just kidding. There was one time when they were playing, I, I, I just had this thought that if I wore the same suit, they were going to win. So if you guys, like, why does he wear that same suit all the time? It was my, it was my good luck suit, you know? But uh, no, I'm, very, I'm very proud of these boys. They did a very good job, these young men. I mean, when you look at our team, and we, we, did, we don't have a lot of size, but I tell you, I have some of the grittiest, some of the toughest kids you ever want to have play, play, play basketball. They were, they were out there this year, and we were, we were so proud of them, you know? I can't start calling all your names off, but, you know, but let me tell you something. Your mayor 
was so proud. Every time I went out to one of those basketball games, I was like, you know, proud to be the mayor of Linden because of the way you guys c conducted yourself on the courts, the way you guys played. You weren't just good players, you were always gentlemen. And that's, a, that's something to be said uh, in, in, a, in, a, in this type of uh, environment that you're in and the environment that we're in. To be gentlemen and to be competitive at the same time is just some, it's a good attribute. And I'm so proud of you, I really am. Without any further ado, let me read this resolution that we have for you guys. It reads as follows, whereas Linden basketball has had a long history steeped in many outstanding accomplishments and the 2022-2023 Linden High School varsity boys basketball team is no exception. Whereas under the direction of coach Anthony Dreha, the 2022-2023 Linden High School varsity basketball team had a very exciting and successful basketball season. And whereas the Linden High School varsity basketball, uh, varsity boys basketball team through their hard work, achieved a record of 24 wins with only seven losses, and were able to win the Group 4 North 2 State Sectional Championship. All right, you can applaud. <laughs> Whereas the Linden High School basketball team was able to achieve these accomplishments with a dedicated team of staff under the guidance of Coach Anthony Dreha, Assistant Coaches Jeffrey Wade, Brian Burgoyne, Desmond Wade, and Mike Campo, Managers Asia Hickman, Eric Calderon and Steve Dodge, and whereas Linden High School varsity basketball team 2022-2023 team roster consisted of Elijah Motley, Jalen Hodge, Naj Robinson, Hashim Nadir, Elijah Butler, Ja'Kai Burnham, Idris Muhammad, Stephen Carty, Tequan Thomas, Samir Skipworth, Ashton Armstead, Darnell DeRosson, Jaleel Turner, Gregory Seabrook, and, Sh and Shane Hargrove. Now therefore, Mayor Derek Armstead and the members of the Linden City Council do hereby congratulate the Linden Varsity Boys Basketball Team and staff on their successful basketball season. This 2022-2023 basketball team and season will be remembered for many years. I'll certainly remember you. So you can all come up and take a picture with the mayor. Okay, we're going to take you to the stairs. Okay. Yeah. We'll be right back. We'll take you to the stairs. A lot easier. We'll go outside. We'll take you to the stairs. The mayor has two more presentations after this, so we'll continue as soon as he returns.
Somebody's waving to you, Christine. Christine? Hmm? Somebody's waving to you. <laughs> okay, thank you. She's going to get it. So mayor coming back up, councilwoman? Okay. Okay. Mayor. Okay. You have a, two more presentations. Okay. Mayor, your next is a resolution for the Rollway Athletic Director. Let's everybody Tom. get in. Give, 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 yes. give, 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 if you want to. So we got Tom. We got Tom coming up. We got Tom Tim Penny. Yes. Is um, Tom Lewis, you still here? Can we close the doors in the back, please? <laughs> can everyone please come in and take their seats so we can continue with the meeting? Can everyone please take their seats? Can everyone please take your seats? Okay, Mayor. Your next resolution is for thanking the Rollway Athletic Director Thomas Lewis and his assistant Kevin Tempenny. Okay. I'm gonna give you a little inside scoop on these two guys. Even though they're from Rollway, when we play Rollway, they secretly root for Linden. No, um, listen, you know, in, in, in life, you have to have friends, okay? When our gym was um, under repair, uh, Tom Lewis gave us access to the Rollway Gymnasium. We played all our home games in Rollway, and his assistant, Kevin Tenpenny, you know, they've, they've been, they're like family to us, basketball family. And we appreciate all they've done for us, and we have a resolution for them as well. Please come up. Please come up, Father Mayor. Come on up. The resolution is recognizing the Rollway Board of Education and staff members for the unselfish sharing of their facilities. It reads, whereas the Linden High School gymnasium sustained water da damage, rendering, rendering it unusable for practice and games by the Linden High School basketball teams. And whereas the Linden High School basketball teams, with their proud history, were in need of a facility capable of adequately providing a quality basketball court. And whereas the Rollway Board of Education, through its athletic director, Thomas Lewis, and its assistant athletic director, Kevin Tenpenny, stepped up in the spirit of cooperation and goodwill, and as a good neighbor, to provide their quality facility for use by all of the Linden High School teams. 
and whereas a gracious host, Mr. Lewis and Mr. Tenpenny worked cooperatively to provide an acceptable schedule for the use of the railway facility, both for Linden's home games and practice sessions, including providing necessary security personnel. And whereas with the appropriate facilities, the Linden Boys varsity team went on to have a 24-7 record and winning the Group 4 North 2 State Sectional Championship, and whereas the mayor and council of the city of Linden appreciates the unselfishness sharing of railway basketball facilities. Now, therefore, it be resolved by Mayor Derek Armstead and the members of the Linden City Council that they express their appreciation to Thomas Lewis and Kevin Tenpenny for their efforts in fostering positive working relationships with the city of Linden in the scheduling and the use of the railway's facilities. Be it further resolved that a copy of this resolution be placed in the minutes of the city, of, city Council of the City of Linden and a copy be fittingly presented to Mr. Lewis and Mr. Tenpenny and is being passed today, March 22nd, 2023, uh, signed by Michelle Yamakaitis and myself, Derek Armstead. Uh, passed today and approved tomorrow. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I just want to uh, steal a moment of your time because I think it's imperative for me to express uh, our grat gratification at being the gratitude we're receiving. But I just want to tell a little story. Uh, two years ago, they had the hurricane that pretty much did enormous damage to the Linden Gymnasium. Uh, athletic director at the time, Steve Vienna, was looking for facility usage, and it became an opportunity that myself as well as Kevin never really understood where this was going to take us. They basically had a program two years out that was in full-blown rebuilding. When Mayor Armstead says he's a fan, he, to me, reminds me of Jerry Jones of the Dallas Cowboys. He thinks he owns the team. <laughs> he goes to the games. He has a seat. There's so many different pieces to this puzzle. But little did we know we were going to have a fantastic relationship with the Linden basketball program. First of all, they have so many great pieces. The Wades, Basically, Anthony Dredger, the head coach, crazy story. I want you to understand just a second about us, because it's not about us. It's about Linda basketball. Kevin Tampany and myself were the executive, co-executive director of the Union County Interscholastic Association in New Jersey. What does that mean? We're in charge of 22 high schools. There's 22 high schools in Union County. Go all the way up to Summit, all the way down to Elizabeth. We represent every tournament in the county. I can't tell you the experience that I witnessed. We had a few games at ALJ and Clark. We played a few at Kane University and the majority at Rahway High School. I didn't realize a lot of different things in my experience of having a long journey to county and knowing all the high schools and all the programs that knowing Linden basketball forever has been good. It's been a powerhouse. As a former coach, I'll probably get in trouble when I go down St. George Avenue, but as a former railway coach, I used to tell our players, don't be afraid, because I am. <laughs> That's how good Linden was, how they came out and played. But I'm going to talk about basically other pieces. Mark, Gary Manutza, they're the backbone, they're the heart of the program. They die, they bleed, they support this program. They are Linden basketball. Mayor Armstead showed me enormous amount of what it really meant. You know, people in life can talk the talk, walk the walk, see it. You want Linden basketball? Three years ago, four and 11, all that good stuff, they were on the bottom. Then they have to lose a gym and come in all around the county, not having a home court advantage. And in basketball, the number one thing you need is a home court advantage. Linden supports their basketball. They come out. Coach Dreza 
took a team that lost in a sectional final. Being a road team all over the place, going to different gyms. In the meantime, I fell in love with the Linden basketball program. Those young men have three qualities that every time I talk to them, and this is the only thing I want in life at this stage, respect. I want respect. And guess what? They gave it to me every day, every night. That's what I say about them. I was, I was excited to be part of it. They have these qualities. I know all those guys. I know every one of those guys. They know me. They're loaded with character. Forget respect. It's a given. Everybody wants to be an athlete. Everybody can. It's a gift from the good Lord up above. It's a God gift. They got it over there. Basically, Mayor Armstead said, didn't have a lot of size. It's the old line. It's not how big the dog is, it's how much fight's in the dog. They had a lot of fight. They turned around, took North East Side out, a real good team. Franklin, a real good team. That's what they did. Character, God-given ability, and the thing I like the best about those guys, humility. They were humble. They didn't act it, they didn't carry on. I watched them in losses and wins. And you know what they have? The character of what it says in the Bible, humility. Learn humility. That group has it. And guess what? The work's not finished. A lot of guys that are going back as sophomores and juniors, I'm looking at them and I'm saying, he had a big part. He had a big part. You know what a big part? Right behind me. Basically, the Manusses, the coaches, they cared. With all the problems we got in this country, it was a breath of fresh air to watch them play, watch how they acted. And trust me, I watched how they, when they lost. I watched that too. You find a whole lot in winning and losing. And I'm going to say this to Linden basketball. I'm going to finish on this. You got so much support and you don't know it. In life, it's about a hook. Who's helping you? Who do you go to when you get jammed up? Some people go on their knees and pray, but in life, there's different people we need. You got great support, Linden basketball. You guys know the old line. I got this. And I say this for the mayor. He don't go to basketball games to watch. He goes because he loves the entertainment of his city. The Manutsas, you're married to it. God bless you. Coaches, continue where your journey takes you. And you know what you're going to do? You're taking the full Monty next year. You're going to win it all. Linden Basketball, congratulations. And thank you, Council and Mayor. Like I said, Linden Basketball is back. Yep. No. Hey, Mayor. Next, we have another sport, soccer. We have certificates of recognition for the Upper 90 Soccer Academy. Now, when I was coming up, we talked about soccer, you know, and we didn't have too much soccer going on in the city. But soccer is a growing sport in Linden. Um, you know, each year I'm watching more and more teams, more and more children get involved, and, uh, and we're actually starting to win some t soccer tournaments now. Whoever, who would ever thought? So um, now we have um, the Upper 90 Soccer Academy of Linden, uh, and I think uh, Coach Allen said we won what five, five years in a row. Uh, we haven't did it since uh, 2021. Okay. Yeah, but you won five. You won five. Well, everybody, we can count. We won five. <laughs> and, that, and that's to be commended. I mean, again, and these are young people, and, and like I said, soccer is becoming a huge sport internationally. And it's nice to see that Lyndon is taking a part in that also. And uh, I think in years to come, 
don't be surprised. You, you start seeing us at, at the higher levels. We're going to start winning some championship games at the high school level because we've got this young feeder system that's now in place now. Uh, and these young people really enjoy the game, and they, and they can play. So without any further ado, we want to give our awards to, we have Adrian Zakorski. I got two here. Hold on, Adrian. Hold on. I told my, my told my secretary to make a list, but okay, it's Adrian, there you go, sir. Thank you, sir. You can stand here. We're gonna take a picture. Oh no, we, I think we'll take our picture downstairs. So. We have Martin Britton. <laughs> Casper Delicat. David Kahiga. David Humala. Is David here? No? Okay. He's not here. Okay. Jaden Martinez. Jeremiah. Ganuza, <laughs> Jesus Ocampo, <laughs> Jordi Rodriguez. Josu Andrejas. Kelvin Mar Marinez. Patrick Bator. Samuel Pitts. Samuel. Samuel Landerverd. And last but certainly not least, Stephen Pajaro. No, we have one more. It looks like Alexander Joel Andegar, Andahar. He's not here also? Okay. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> our, our, our future soccer champions of Linden. Okay, congratulations all. Now I think we're going to go down and take a picture. What, 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 oh, can you take a picture? Okay, go Mayor, if you want to take a picture, okay? Yes. Okay. Okay, this is also, we're going to continue with the official business of the meeting. Anybody that wants to be excused now, thank you for coming and supporting our Linden Sports. I, I forgot to congratulate the coach, Alex Moreja. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to call him Big Al from now on.
Okay, we're going to now move on to ordinances on hearing. Okay, we're just waiting. We're missing two council members. Lisa went to take a picture. Yeah. Thank you, Councilwoman Hudak. All right, we're going to move on to ordinances on hearing, beginning with ordinance 67-5. An, an ordinance to amend and supplement chapter two administration of an ordinance entitled an ordinance adopting and enacting the revised general ordinances of the city of Linden, 1999, passed November 23rd, 1999, and approved November 24th, 1999, and as amended and supplemented. Be ordained by the Council of the City of Linden, Chapter 2, Administration, Article 7, Boards, Committees, and Commissions, is hereby amended and supplemented. Add new 2-68, Emergency Management Council, as follows, Section 1, 2-68, Emergency Management Council. Okay, has the ordinance been properly published and posted? Yes, ma'am. Has any written communication been received? No, ma'am. Is there anyone from the public who wishes to be heard on this ordinance? Okay, seeing none, could we have a motion, please? Yes, Council President, I move to close the public hearing of ordinance number 67-5. Move for approval and request a second. Second. Mrs. Ormond? Yes. Javik? Yes. Caldwell? Yes. Mohammed? Yes. Roman? Yes. Strano? Yes. Blaine? Yes. Hudak? Yes. Mrs. Yemakaitis? Yes. Ordinance 67-6, please. An ordinance to amend and supplement Chapter 3, Police Regulations, of an ordinance entitled an ordinance adopting and enacting the revised general ordinances of the City of Linden, 1999, passed November 23, 1999, and approved November 24, 1999, and as amended and supplemented. Be it ordained by the Council of the City of Linden, Section 1, Chapter 3, Police Regulations, Sections 3-23.3, Towing and Storage, Schedule of Services and Fees shall be and the same is hereby amended as follows. Delete Section 3-23.3 in its entirety, add new Section 3-23.3 as follows, 3-23.3, Schedule of Services and Fees. Has the ordinance been properly published and posted? Yes, ma'am. Has any written communication been received? No, ma'am. Is there anyone from the public who wishes to be heard on this ordinance? Seeing none, can we have a motion, please? Yes, Council President, I move to close the public hearing of ordinance number 67-6. Move for approval and request a second. Second. Mrs. Ormond. Yes. 
Javik? Yes. Caldwell? Yes. Mohammed? Yes. Roman? Yes. Strano? Yes. Blaine? Yes. Hudak? Yes. Yemekite, Mrs. Yemekitis? Yes. Ordinance 67-7. An ordinance establishing a calendar a, establishing calendar year 2023 cap bank. Has the ordinance been properly published and posted? Yes, ma'am. Has any written communication been received? No, ma'am. Is there anyone from the public who wishes to be heard on this ordinance? Seeing none, can we have a motion, please? Yes, Council President, I'd like a motion to close the hearing on ordinance 67-7. Adopted and asked for a second, please. Second. Mrs. Ormond? Yes. Javik? Yes. Caldwell? Yes. Mohammed? Yes. Roman? Yes. Strano? Yes. Blaine? Yes. Hudak? Yes. Mrs. Yamakaitis? Yes. Ordinance 67-8, please. Bond ordinance amending bond ordinance number 66-30, finally adopted by the City Council of the City of Linden, New Jersey, on May 17th, 2022. Has the ordinance been properly published and posted? Yes, ma'am. Has any written communication been received? No, ma'am. Is there anyone from the public who wishes to be heard on this ordinance? Seeing none, can we have a motion, please? Yes, Council President, I'd like to make a motion to close the hearing on Ordinance 67-8, adopted and asked for a second, please. Second. Mrs. Orman? Yes. Javik? Yes. Caldwell? Yes. Mohammed? Yes. Roman? Yes. Strano? Yes. Blaine? Yes. Hudak? Yes. Mrs. Yemakaitis? Yes. Okay, uh, ordinance 67-9. A bond ordinance providing an appropriation of $594,550 for various cop capital acquisitions and improvements for the Division of Public Works and authorizing the issuance of $564,822 in bonds or notes of the city for financing part of the appropriation. Has the ordinance been properly published and posted? Yes, ma'am. Has any written communication been received? No, ma'am. Is there anyone from the public who wishes to be heard on this ordinance? Seeing none, can we have a motion, please? Council President, I move that uh, we close the hearing on ordinance number 67-9, the ordinance adopted, and I request a second. Second. Mrs. Ormond? Yes. Javik? Yes. Caldwell? Yes. Mohammed? Yes. Roman? Yes. Strano? Yes. Blaine? Yes. Hudak? Yes. Mrs. Yemekaitis? Yes. Ordinance uh, 6710, please. Bond ordinance providing an appropriation of $55,000 for master plan for various city parks for and by the city of Linden and authorizing the issuance of $52,250 in bonds or notes of the city for financing part of the appropriation. Has the ordinance been properly published and posted? Yes, ma'am. Has any written communication been received? No, ma'am. Is there anyone from the public who wishes to be heard on this ordinance? Okay. Seeing none, can we have a motion, please? Thank you, Council President. I make a motion to make uh, move ordinance 67-10 and close this ordinance and ask for a second, please. Second. Mrs. Ormond? Yes. Javik? Yes. Caldwell? Yes. Mohammed? Yes. Roman? Yes. Strano? Yes. Blaine? Yes. Hudak? Yes. Mrs. Yemakaitis? Yes. Ordinance 6711, please. Bond ordinance providing an appropriation of $1,985,500 for the acquisition of a tower ladder with equipment for the fire department for and by the City of Linden and authorizing the issuance of $1,886,225 bonds or notes of the city for financing part of the appropriation. Okay. Has the ordinance been properly published and posted? Yes, ma'am. Has any written communication been received? No, ma'am. Is there anyone from the public who wishes to be heard on this ordinance? Seeing none, can we have a motion, please? Yes, Council President, I move to close the public hearing of ordinance number 67-11. Move for approval and request a second. Second. Mrs. Orman? Yes. Javik? Yes. Caldwell? Yes. Mohammed? Yes. Roman? Yes. Strano? Yes. Blaine? Yes. Hudak? Yes. Mrs. Yamakaitis. Yes. Ordinance 67-12.
about an ordinance to amend and supplement chapter seven, traffic of an ordinance entitled an ordinance adopting and enacting the revised general ordinances of the city of Linden 1999, passed November 23rd, 1999, and approved November 24th, 1999, and as amended and supplemented. Be it ordained by the council of the city of Linden, section one, that chapter seven traffic shall be in the same as hereby amended as follows. Chapter seven traffic 7-33, handicapped parking regulations, 7-33.1A, handicapped parking on the street, add 1124 Hollywood Road, one space. Okay, has the ordinance been properly published and posted? Yes, ma'am. Has any written communication been received? No, ma'am. Is there anyone from the public who wishes to be heard on this ordinance? Okay, seeing none, can we have a motion, please? Yes, Council President, I'd like to make a motion to close the hearing on, on 67-12, adopted and asked for a second, please. Second. Mrs. Orman. Yes. Javik. Yes. Caldwell. Yes. Mohammed. Yes. Roman. Yes. Strano. Yes. Blaine. Yes. Hudak. Yes. Mrs. Yamakaitis. Yes. Ordinance 6713. Ordinance 6713. Council President, oh, I'd like to make a motion. Go ahead. Council President, I'd like to, like to make a motion to table this particular audience until our April meeting. Okay. Can we have a second? Second. Mrs. Orman? Yes. Javik? Yes. Caldwell? Yes. Mohammed? Yes. Roman? Yes. Strano? Yes. Blaine? Yes. Hudak? Yes. Mrs. Yamakaitis? Yes. Ordinance 6714. An ordinance approving the application for a long-term tax exemption and authorizing the execution of a final agreement with Structured Operations Urban Renewal, LLC. Okay, has the ordinance been properly published and posted? Yes, ma'am. Has any written communication been received? No, ma'am. Is there anyone from the public who wishes to be heard on this ordinance? Yes, please come up and state your name. Hi, Lisa Fabrizio. Um, just, am I allowed to ask a question? I'm just wondering. Uh, could you um, hold on one second? Could you, uh, Keith, could you please turn that around? Oh. Turn it around? He's gonna. Take okay, it. yes. Thank you. Mr. Pressy, could you please just put those certificates on the table? Thank you, sure. sir. Okay. okay. Please Sorry state your that. name and address for the record. Lisa Fabrizio, 2635 Northwood Ave. Okay. Um, what ahead. service does Urban? Urban. I can't find it. Urban Renewal. What services Urban Renewal provide, and why are they tax exempt? Council President Matt, I can give a decent overview of this. Okay. Uh, this is um, a long-term uh, tax exemption, which is kind of standard with development uh, anywhere in the state, let alone the city. Um, this is specifically for 750 West Edgar Road, which is on the Legacy Square property uh, in the Sixth Ward. It's for a Holiday okay. Inn. Okay. Um, in order to spur development in the past the city of Linden and every other municipality in the state goes into a pilot program so that an entity like this knows what they're going to be paying for the next 30 years in their taxes which in this case it's two hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year per year and then it goes up two percent every year a total of about six million dollars over 30 years okay. currently that property is probably generating ten grand a year if anything uh, they're gonna put a holiday in there Okay. Uh, so essentially, that's that's what this is, and that's that. This is the city council approving that application. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And oh, I'm sorry, it was 7.5. Just got a piece, yeah. handed a piece of paper. 7.56 million over 30 years. Okay, thank you. Okay. Does anyone else wish to be heard on? Yes, please. Please just state your name and address. John Kayser, 23 West Montel Avenue. Um, you, you explained most of it. I, I, we've talked about this, Councilman Roman, I, I, so now we know it's a holiday. And so it's, it's another long-term tax exemption. And 
it's being said that this is the this is the way we're moving forward from now on, right? Pilot program payment in lieu of taxes. Um, I don't know. I guess I guess time will tell with um, how these are going. So this is going to be like so. I don't know, rudimentary math, it, like fifth or sixth property now, that, or maybe, maybe even more. That's, that, I guess this is just the way we're, we're moving. I, I attended the, um, the, the seminar they had at Gregorio Center, and they explained about it, that, that you can't attract any development anymore without these payment in lieu of taxes. Is this, yes, so, so I'll just say it like this, not that I, and I have been against many pilots on this council before, and I voted no on a lot of them. Um, but if a bank, is, if a developer, say John Kayser LLC, is trying to get development to build 10 units, um, you get, what the city says to you, in law, this is what you're going to pay for the next 30 years. And then you show a bank, this is what it's going to cost me to build those 10 units. The bank is much more likely to give you the financing in order to, accomplish that because they know you're going to fill those 10 units got it and that's thus you know it expands the city's portion of what they've been getting previously they get got more mm -hmm. you know that you, you know this. i'm trying to explain this for the people here that don't know that um but obviously there are some downsides at some times and you know that's for everyone to weigh so all of the properties that are that we have um on these long-term exemptions so far they're they're uh, everyone's up to date like everyone's paid up like uh, yeah it's all good okay um, yeah, real quick though, the one you tabled is the one I had. A, I actually had a question on. Um, it's been years. That's the D's dugout it's on property. This one only, sir. What? We're only speaking about. You're this not one. allowed because you tabled it. We're not allowed to speak on it now. You can come sorry, up in the man. public portion if you'd like. Okay. Sorry. Okay, because it's been going on for years. I was at a planning board meeting in 2019. I'm just curious what it's amended now and how long it's going to go on. Like the property's been laying dormant for a while. Okay, no problem. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else from the public who wishes to be heard on this ordinance? Okay, seeing none, can we have a motion, please? Yes, Council President, I'd like to make a motion to close the hearing on 67-14, adopted and asked for a second, please. Second. Mrs. Ormond. Yes. Javik. Yes. Caldwell. Yes. Mohammed. Yes. Roman. No. Strano. Yes. Blaine? Yes. Hudak? Yes. Mrs. Yamakaitis? Yes. Okay, ordinance 6715, please. Bond ordinance providing an appropriation of $1,241,900 for various capital improvements for the Division of Transportation and Properties and authorizing the issuance of $1,179,805 in bonds or notes of the city for financing part of the appropriation. Okay, has the ordinance been properly published and posted? Yes, ma'am. Has any written communication been received? No, ma'am. Is there anyone from the public who wishes to be heard on this ordinance? Okay. Seeing none, can we have a motion, please? I make a motion for ordinance 6715 and, um, and close the hearing and ask to adopt and ask for a second. Again. Mrs. Ormond. Yes. Javik. Yes. Caldwell. Yes. Mohammed. Yes. Roman. Yes. Strano. Yes. Blaine. Yes. Hudak. Yes. Mrs. Yamakaitis. Yes. Okay. Consent agenda items. All items listed with asterisks are considered to be routine by the city council and will be enacted with one motion. There will be no separate discussion on these items unless a council member so requests. We have items number one through six. Does any council member wish to remove an item? Seeing none, can we have a motion, please? I make a motion to move items one through six and, and ask for adoption and ask for a second. Second. Mrs. Ormond. Yes. Javik. Yes. Caldwell. Yes. Mohammed. Yes. Roman. Yes. Strano. Yes. Blaine. Yes. Hudak. Yes. Mrs. Yamakaitis. Yes. Okay, we'll now move on to uh, reports from the governing body. Okay. Um, we ha I just want to announce this is Women's History Month, and 
on our resolutions this evening, we have resolutions honoring uh, some women from Linden, um, Danny Orlean Armstead, Kellyanne Koziel, Liz uh, Laura Sissy Sasarek, Rebecca Karen Statoli, and Barbara Greco Brady. They will be honored for their contributions to the City of Linden for Women's History Month by the Cultural and Heritage Committee. Okay, they're on for resolutions this evening. They're gonna, there's gonna be a tea which Councilwoman Orma will speak more about uh, during her report, but we'd like to congratulate them on their accomplishments. Okay, um, Councilwoman Ormond. Thank you, Council President. I'm just gonna piggyback right off of that um, uh, first before I go into my other reports. But yes, it is our great pleasure to honor outstanding women in our community every year who have made a, a contribution, not only to the city, but to the lives of those that are around them. These women are phenomenal women. Names don't have to be repeated again, but they know who they are and they know what they have done. So this month, which is National Women's History Month, we not only want to pay homage to them, but to every woman who has made a significant impact in the lives of those around them. Congratulations, women. We are here to stay. I'm going to also just go over my budget review and finance um, report, and then the traffic report, and then close with just a little housekeeping. Okay, approval is requested for the following finance items. The payment of bills totaling $2,605,979.72. Bills have been signed by the mayor, council president, and finance chairwoman, and a detailed check register and vouchers are on file in the clerk's office. We are in receipt of the investment made by the city treasurer for the month of February at the rate of 3.1%. I move for approval and ask for a second, please. Second. Yes. Yes. Caldwell. Yes. Mohammed. Yes. Roman. Yes. Strano. I have to abstain. Blaine. Yes. Hudak. Yes. Mrs. Yamakaitis. Yes. Go ahead, Councilwoman. The City of Linden, Division of Transportation and Properties. I hereby submit the monthly financial report from the Division of Transportation and Parking for the month of February 2023. This report includes the collection of on and off street parking meters, railroad parking lots, railroad parking permits, and merchant parking permits. The Trenton side collections total $1,409. New York side collections, $1,029. Railroad credit card transactions, $29,494.82. Nothing for railroad permits and nothing for online railroad permits. Parking meter collections, $1,046.10. Merchant permits, $2,625. The grand total of $43 thousand five hundred forty five dollars and five cents submitted by Tyrone L. Gibbons traffic maintenance supervisor now just just for just a little teeny housekeeping and it's something it's a pet peeve of mine spring is here and we have got to slow down in our neighborhoods it's not just people that are coming through traveling in Linden it's the people that live here also that seem to think that certain streets because there are no stop signs are the, the Autobahn it's not. I've seen too many accidents happen because people aren't adhering to four-way stop signs, and it's such a rush to get somewhere. I've seen fences taken down on corners of residents that have their children playing in their backyard. We have to slow it down. We don't play chicken on the road. If you see somebody coming and the road is too narrow, yield to that pedestrian, uh, to that traffic that's coming through. Everybody's in such a rush. We're gonna hurt somebody. So please be careful. The weather is getting warm. You're gonna see more children on their bikes and on skateboards and balls running into streets. Just slow it down, please, for the sake of everyone. That's pretty much the only horrible thing that I see going on in the community. The first ward is rocking. Everything seems to be going well. Let's just keep it that way. And my report, Council President. Thank you, Councilwoman. Okay, Councilman Javik. Yes, Council President. Uh, starting with the uh, fire re report here, as chairman of the fire committee, uh, the Fire Prevention Bureau collected the following monies during the month of February. 2023, a total of $16,708.44. Regarding the Linden Fire Department ambulance <coughs> billing, the uh, amount of $59,881.74 for February 2023 have been added 
to the total deposits for 2023, totaling $140,145.80. As a liaison to the Board of Health, I'd like to report that the Nas that, uh, National Public Health Week is April 3rd to April 9th. And the Health Department will be holding an open house on Tuesday, April 4th from 2 to 4 p.m. at the JTG Recreation Center. During the open house, Health Department staff, including our nurses, inspectors, outreach team, and clerks will be available to speak with the public about the work they do and answer any questions. The nurses will also be providing free blood pressure readings and there will be free giveaways. Everyone in our community is welcome. Now, this is a very important uh, item here, that uh, there's a new lead hazard evaluation program for pre-1978 residential rental properties that just went into effect. In uh, compliance with the recently enacted public law 2021, Chapter 182, the Board of Health has established a lead-based paint hazard evaluation program as required by this law. The law specifically imposes an obligation on municipalities to perform or hire a certified lead evaluation contractor to perform lead hazard evaluations in all residential rental dwellings constructed prior to 1978, including single family homes, multiple family homes, and apartment buildings. As required by state law, the Board of Health ordinance, property owners of residential rental dwellings must register both the owner information and tenant information with the health department and must have at least one lead hazard evaluation conducted at the dwelling prior to July 2nd, 2024. A lead hazard evaluation guide from the Department of Community Affairs explaining the recent laws and this program have been added to the health department's homepage on the city website and this page can be found by going to the city of Linden website at linden-newjersey.gov, uh, going to the health tab at the top of the page and selecting department homepage, or by going directly to linden-newjersey.gov slash directory slash health-department. Uh, health uh, property owners can contact the health department to schedule the required lead hazard evaluation with their department, or they can hire their own lead evaluation contractor to conduct a required evaluation and then file a lead safe or lead free certificate with the health department afterwards. Failure to comply with the new laws can result in legal action. So we encourage all owners of residential rental properties that were constructed prior to 1978 to contact the health department at 908-474-8409 at their earliest opportunity and ask to speak with the lead hazard clerk. Also as a reminder, uh, rabies vaccination clinics will be, uh, rabies vaccination clinics will be May 1st, 10th and 20th. Uh, on Monday, May 1st, 3 to 5 p.m. at Fire Station 3 at 1205 Elizabeth Avenue. Wednesday, May 10th, 5 to 8 p.m at Fire Station 1 at 302 Southwood Avenue, and Saturday, May 20th, 10 to 2 p.m. at Fire Station 2 at 302 West St. George Avenue. The clerk's office will also have a staff on hand at each of the clinics to process both new and renewal dog licenses. Good evening, everyone. So recently, I uh, received calls regarding the restoration of West uh, Price Street, especially the Lumber Street, area. We are awaiting the gas and water company who was responsible for the repaving. Uh, in the meantime, we will be filling the potholes as the weather permits. So, you know, just bear with us on this. We got to go by that. But uh, it's going to be done. I know a lot of people have asked me about it. It's got a lot of problems right now, a lot of holes, but uh, we have to wait for the water and gas company because they are contracted to do it. Also, ongoing issue in the ward is pet waste. Please pick up after walking your pet. As a homeowner or tenant, if you need a sign on your property to remind the public to pick up after their pet, let me know. And one last thing, the city is also addressing the light industrial area on West Price Street heading towards Rawway. It seems it has become a staging area for truckers, 
uh, who are emptying their personal garbage on our streets. So we're gonna, we're gonna get right to that. I can be reached at 908-494-4608 or email me at bjavik at linden-newjersey.gov on Facebook, Second Ward Councilman Barry Javik. As always, additional information can be found on our City of Linden website. Council President, end of report. Thank you, Councilman Javik. Councilwoman Caldwell. Thank you, Council President. As the Chair of Code and Construction, the Department has issued 235 permits, processed 35 certificates, and generated $284,979 for the month of February. There are upcoming new projects um, that will be uh, Wawa stores on Park Avenue and Legacy Square um, in the Superfresh parking lot. There's gonna be a new Dunkin' Donuts um, at Legacy Square where Super the Super Walmart is at. There's gonna be a Holiday Inn Express, uh, a Blue Sunday res restaurant, uh, Diamond Braces, and currently there is a AFC Urgent Care now open in Legacy Square. Um, they're also going to be opening a dental office in May of 2023 in Legacy Square. So there's a lot of upcoming projects. Linden is growing. Um, there has been $11,000 allocated to the third ward to fix um, the sidewalks, and that's a work in progress. Um, there has also been a senior grant program um, for senior citizens making a certain amount of money where they can get a grant for $10,000. Um, this is approved by the Union County Community Development Full Committee meeting and the number where you can reach them is 732-507-2004. As for the IT, I'm the IT chair. Um, there's no new projects at the current time, um, but the key card swipe change, the range camera system, the Dobson Park camera system should be installed in April. The inventory system for all hardware has been updated. Um, there's been replacement computers. There's gonna be a Windows 11 upgrade and um, firewall replacements. I just wanna say, if you need to reach out to me, you know I'm always a call, text, email away. My number is 908-531-0676. I can be emailed at mcallwell at linden-newjersey.org. And that concludes my report. Thank Council you, Councilwoman President. Caldwell. Councilman Mohammed. Council President, good evening friends and neighbors. I'm looking forward to, I'm sure you are too, to springtime weather and continuous progress, such as color coding at the, in the Martin Luther King Park. Please continue to reach out to me at 908-463-4843 uh, and stay well and look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Roman. Thank you, Council President. Uh, over the next couple weeks in, and two months, um, I will be walking through Wheeler Park with uh, our new commissioner from Linden, as well as uh, other county executives. There's been a bit of a turnover there. Um, so I just, every single spring, I walk Wheeler Park uh, with some sort of county officials and ask them to kind of do preventative maintenance in order to keep the park in shape because if you ignore some certain spots during the bloom in the spring it, they get out of control in the summer and you can't even have a chance of, of making it better at that point so I'm um, expecting to do that if anyone has any suggestions or um, I know there's some graffiti in the park they're gonna take care of uh, that they're already aware of you know just throw them my way please uh, so I'm excited about to be able to do that um, we're also gonna do a spring cleanup this year again and we're also um, Right now, the um, six war garage sale is scheduled for June 10th. However, uh, I'm, there have been a couple asks of me to, to do it sooner so people can get a garage sale. So I was, I was possibly going to see if I can change that. Uh, so please stay tuned to that. Um, I've asked traffic to take a closer look at um, some of our trouble, sheets, tr trouble streets in the six ward, as I call them. These are Woodlawn, uh, Clinton, 
uh, which is the Clinton Speedway at this point. Um, West Stimson and West Munsell, uh, cars fly down here. So they will, there will be increased patrols. Uh, and also we're having a lot of increased truck traffic on Woodlawn going through some of our side streets like East 12th, East 11th, uh, taking down wires. Uh, it's seemingly a constant problem, but it's getting worse. Uh, so if one of these trucks go down this street, it's a thousand to fifteen hundred dollar light traffic ticket and they are going to give them. Uh, so if you, don't, if you know any truckers, tell them to stay away from that area. Uh, one last thing, as a member of our fire committee, I'm really happy that we just passed an ordinance or we're passing an ordinance to buy um, a new peer, Pierce fire truck ladder. Um, although the price has exponentially gone up over the last couple of years due to COVID and everything going up, uh, I'm really proud that this purchase is finally happening. Our current ladder is aging and it's never been more important to adequately train and give our fire department the equipment they need to stay safe. And this fire ladder is going to go a long way. And I, I know it's a I know it's a, basically a, a couple year build to build a ladder like this, but I can't wait to uh, crack some champagne on it with you there, Chief, and, and the rest of the fire committee. Um, with that, my phone number is 908-494-5784. On a personal note, I know council said this last month, I really just wanna thank everyone who came out to my birthday fundraiser and also some of the six orders that came to my wedding. Uh, last Saturday and reached out and, and gave me all well wishes. I, I appreciate you and it's my honor to serve you. So thank you, Council President. That concludes my report. Yes, Councilman, and congratulations thank on you. your reach. And thank you. Jewels. She's asking me if I'm coming home yet right now. <laughs> wait till, wait. <laughs> I think, I think <laughs> this is going to be a trend. Wait. <laughs> yeah, hey, I, Councilman I, Strano. I, I don't know if I, am I supposed to offer congratulations or condolences? <laughs> <laughs> be nice, Councilman. Uh, congratulations, John. Your wife is watching. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so, um, therefore, I speak such. Anyway, <laughs> uh, real quick, confidential personnel report. Um, number one in the police department is the A, approving a promotion of Lieutenant Robert Sanchez to police captain effective April 1st of uh, 2023 at the salary of $173,272. B is approving the promotion of Sergeant Joseph Rivera to police lieutenant effective April 1st, 2023 at the annual salary of $143,761. C is appro approving the promotion of police officer John Condora to police sergeant effective April 1st, 2023 at the salary of $122,626. Two in the fire department, A is to approve the promotion of Lieutenant Kevin Schulhafer to provisional fire captain effective April 1st of 2023 at the annual rate of $137,056. B is approving the promotion of firefighter Eric Turon to fire lieutenant effective April 1st of 2023 at the annual salary of $119,410. Three in the recreation department. Uh, approving the salary adjustment for Stacy De Silva to receive a $5,000 increase for her additional duties. B is approving the amended work hours of Andre Pearson and Amanda Williams not to exceed 25 hours per week, effective March 22nd of 2023. Approving the temporary appointment of Bail Owl Cadet as a recreation leader, omnibus driver at the rate of $21 per hour, not to exceed 35 hours per week, effective March 28th of 2023, subject to the successful completion of the city's pre-employment requirements. D is approving the change in title for Sequia Carrillo to uh, Clerk 1, retroactive March 1st, 2023, at no change in salary. E is approving the appointment of Letitia Davis, part-time Clerk 1, not to exceed 25 hours per week at the annual rate of $18.98 per hour, effective April 10th of 2023, subject to successful completion of the city's pre-employment requirements. Four, in the Department of Community Services, the Division of Public Works, approving the resignation, not in good standing, of Harry Martinez, labor effective February 27th, 2023, B is approving the resignation in good standing of Nicholas Plummer at Canic Supper, effective March 6th of 2023. C is approved the posting for the position of a truck driver in public works at the salary range of $21 to $31.72 per hour. D is approving the posting for the position of a laborer in the public works at the salary range of $18 to $28.30 per hour. E is approving the resignation not in good standing of Miguel Jordan, truck driver, effective February 23rd of 2023, 
F is approving the posting of a mechanics helper at the salary range of 18 to $41.72 per hour. G is approving the appointment of Michael Plonsky, provisional mechanic, tier two in public works at the annual rate of $27 per hour, and it's effective April 10th of 2023, subject to the successful completion of the city's pre-employment requirements. The city grants Mr. Plonsky a residency waiver. In the division of purchasing, A is approving the title change for Kelly Freeze to purchasing assistant at the annual salary of $46,500, and that's effective March 22nd of 2023. Six is in the Division of Personnel, FMLA, approval of the list is on file in the personnel department. I move for approval and ask for a second. Second. Mrs. Orman. Yes. Javik. Yes. Caldwell. Yes. Mohammed. Yes. Roman. Yes. Strano. Yes. Blaine. Yes. Hudak. Mrs. Yamakaitis. Yes. Okay, at this time I'd like to congratulate um, uh, Lieutenant, um, um, Patrolman Robert, um, no, I'm gonna start with John Condor, the police sergeant, Joseph Rivera to lieutenant, and Robert Sanchez, the police captain. I think they're here, please stand. <laughs> Congratulations, gentlemen. Congratulations. I know you'll do us proud. Uh, also, it's later on, well, actually, it was on the consent agenda. I want to congratulate uh, retirements for Danny Oleski, uh, General Supervisor in DPW, uh, Officer Thomas Toth in the Police Department, and Captain Christopher Ward in the Fire uh, uh, Department. Uh, congratulations, fellas, and uh, um, wish you well in your retirement. Uh, that concludes my report at this time, uh, Council President. Thank you, Councilman Strano. Councilman Blaine? Uh, thank you, Council President, <clears throat> and uh, good evening to all the Linden residents. Uh, just give a brief report on parks and recreation. i um, very enthused that the new director of parks and recreation is implementing a host of uh, events and bringing new life to, to that department. Um, just to give you a few, uh, he's put a team party together that's going to happen on April 14th. Uh, June 3rd, there will be a fishing derby, so it, it's time to come back outside, and, and there's plenty of programs for, for the kids to get off the games, get out of the house, and, and come back, and, and let's go outside and enjoy each other again. Um, there's 15 concerts to start, starting at June 2nd, so we're, we're, we're enthused about that. I'm also enthused about um, the new director is, is implementing something for the seniors and he's gonna have a senior exercise day for some of the seniors to get out and, and let that blood get them moving around. He's also have, uh, at the request of the seniors, there is an Atlantic City bus ride on 411. So if you know of anyone who's interested, please have them contact the, the website and, and join up because it's just gonna be a wonderful event. And we're also trying to improve the registration of soccer, PAL, basketball, and summer camp registration has, has begun. So again, now's the time to get involved. Uh, let's, let's, let's get outside as a community. Um, and that will be all I have on that one. Speaking of the fourth ward, um, we, we understand the issues that are going on on Beale and that's with the test well and the streets are caving in. Um, we've spoke to the engineer and my understanding is that the people who did the initial test well uh, refurbishing or replacement uh, didn't do a good job so they'll be contacted to redo that and hopefully that will fix that problem. For everyone in the eighth ward over on East Baltimore, I know you see a lot of trucks, a lot of pipes, pipes over there. Um, they are fixing the water mains throughout the city. They're just storing that equipment there. So just bear with us as we improve the quality of life throughout the entire city. So uh, let's just deal with that uh, inconvenience as we improve uh, the water system. Um, good news is we will be getting some new paint striping on the bridge of Park Avenue. They'll uh, redo the striping in the middle and of the, both crosswalks on each side of uh, this Elizabeth and I forget the other name of the street but the oh, the bridge on Park Avenue will be getting new paint as soon as the weather uh, permits. One bit of news uh, about the new businesses that come into Linden as we welcome new business and we really invite new businesses here in Linden but 
we, we ask that they come and, and don't inconvenience the, 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 the residents. Uh, I had to speak to one business because the garbage can keeps, the garbage container keeps floating out into the street. So as residents come, it's really blocking the view. But, and, and the owners were really nice. The managers were really nice. And they, they uh, are going to work with us so that we don't, we're not inconvenienced and that, again, we continue to improve our quality of life. Uh, I want to say that, unfortunately, we had to reschedule our fourth ward meeting. It was going to be held on 4-1. We're going to push that back a couple of weeks, and as soon as we secure a location, we'll be putting that information out. One last note I just want to make that although, and I know this is a very touchy subject, and if I run out of time, please spare me an extra minute. Um, I know marijuana is legal. The weather's getting nice, but it's not legal. Legal marijuana is legal. Sir? It's not. Legal marijuana is legal. What? You said marijuana is legal. Yeah, Think legal marijuana. Right you're you're, you're absolutely correct. <laughs> legal marijuana is legal. But it's not to be enjoyed freely in the community. So let's be mindful of that. So share that with your family. And that's all I'm going to say on that. Thank you, Council President. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, Councilwoman Hudak. Yes, thank you. I'd like to say thank you to the Linden Superior Officers Association and to the Linden PBA 42. They provided lunch and the much needed support to Linden Public Schools, particularly McManus School Number 4 and School Number 10 during our time of loss. So we, uh, we greatly appreciate all of that and um, their presence that was also very appreciative and very supportive for us. And um, also Ramadan Kareem to those who celebrate. That concludes my report. Thank you, Councilwoman. Uh, Mayor, before you begin, I just had an addition. Um, I was just texted that we have a fishing derby June, June 3rd for Hafnod. That's hooked on fishing, not on drugs. So we'll find more information on our website at the times so if you have children interested in joining the fishing derby again that's going to be june 3rd okay mayor go ahead okay thank you council president uh, first i'll start my report off by congratulating uh, captain sanchez on his promotion and uh, lieutenant joseph rivera and sergeant john codera i should say captain robert sanchez okay right well, thank you guys um you, you've all deserve it you're all very hard workers I've watched you guys in action for quite some time, and, uh, and I think you're all going to do very well in your new positions, okay? And I know policing is not an easy job, and managing police officers is not an easy job either, so, um, but I'm confident you all will do a great job. Thank you for all you do. I'd like to also congratulate our fire promotions as Kevin Schulhafer to fire captain and Eric Turan uh, to lieutenant. Um, again, they, they're both... Uh, deserving of their positions they do have done a great job and uh, and again these positions aren't just given to people they 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 earn them and they deserve them um, I think I'm going to talk about the budget I've talked about it every month now for the last two council sessions um, uh, as you all know and I think um, we discussed it that the state health care benefits uh, the increase uh, was what I would first say was detrimental to our budget, uh, but we worked very hard, Alexis, myself, uh, members of the Finance Committee, and we got the, the increase down to $5.60 a month per house that's assessed at $135,000. Am I correct, Alexis? Okay. Um, and that took some tremendous, under, 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 uh, some tremendous work, a lot of work, to get us down to that number. And as, as I said in the past, you know, people often questioned why I was getting involved in Board of Education elections and, you know, my involvement. And so now, you know, I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, the involvement has, has, has actually paid off. Uh, because realizing that we were faced with a tax increase, I began communicating this message to the Board of Education and, the, and their finance department. And what they did is uh, was almost unthinkable. What they did... Um, was lowered the tax levy by $2 million for the city of Linden. So once again, the residents of Linden uh, are not going to see uh, any tax increases uh, 
Uh, and, and again, I'm sad to say that we have to raise it $5.60 or $60 per year. But uh, I think with the help of the uh, Board of Education, uh, this is a, a most, noble, uh, most noble action. And, I, and I'm, I'm very thankful that we can, again, tell our residents that they can see a level or no tax increase in their city again. And I think that's what we're here for. And it's a typical example of when two branches of government can work together and, and accomplish and achieve a, a, what I think is an outstanding goal. So uh, just want to make sure we talk about that. The residents need to know that government can collaborate, two branches, and we can move things forward. All right, let me, let me move on with some other things. Uh, earlier this evening, I heard there was some talk about pilots, and I just want everybody to realize, you know, it, it's those very pilot payments uh, that, that, that came to our rescue uh, when the government hit, governor hit us with this increase. It's those pilot agreements, that extra income and extra revenue that allowed myself and the finance department to uh, put together a budget uh, that was not overbearing to our residents. So pilots are very good. Uh, it, it, it creates this, when, when, a, when a developer wants to come into your town and he asks for a pilot, banks look at that stability. No bank wants to loan money knowing that taxes are going to go through the roof. So pilots enable developers to have a certain tax rate uh, for 10 years, increases another amount for the next 10 years, and it will increase again in, in, the, in the final 10 years. And what that does, it creates that stability. So usually by the time the 30 years are up, uh, the property is usually paid for. And at that time, the city will receive total taxes, and the developers can withstand you know, whatever type of expenses uh, they would incur uh, at that time. So uh, it's a good concept and it works. Um, I'll talk a little bit about the um, things that are going on in town. Uh, uh, last Friday, we had a uh, ribbon cutting at Little Havana's. It's uh, where the old fathers and sons used to be, along with, with um, a little Havana, I'm saying, Little Havana. It's where the old father and sons used to be, and there used to be a Savannah's there at one time. It's located at 10 East Blanky Street. Um, my staff um, and some members from the city hall went over, uh, and I can tell you the food and coffee were, were very good, and uh, we want our residents to come out and support our new establishments so that they can survive and make it in our town. Uh, I think the food's excellent. Also, earlier this month, we had a ribbon cutting at a place called AFC Urgent Care. It's down in our Leg Legacy Square uh, shopping center on Route 1 and 9. Um, it's good that our residents have several um, multi-care and medical treatment fac facilities that they can go to. Uh, you all know how troubling it can be if you go to the hospital and you have to sit there for, you know, for extended periods of time and not being treated. So these urgent care facilities are definitely a, um, a good thing for our residents. My staff and I had a meeting today with the folks from the new FedEx warehouse at 2525 uh, Brunswick Avenue. And I have to say they're moving very quickly. They plan to have this uh, facility operational by the summer. And uh, the project is um, projected to uh, produce almost 300 jobs while working in conjunction with, with our Linden First program. Earlier this evening, you guys may have um, heard about Ordinance 67-14 on, on hearing. It's in, the works for, it's been in the works for years now. It's been delayed to a pandemic. This ordinance will provide a North Star Hospitality, a pilot program to jumpstart the Holiday Inn Express, which will be located Route 1 and 9, uh, in between the Cantor property and the Legacy Square property. The pilot program, if approved, this hotel will generate the city $8.37 million uh, versus, um, oh, that's over 30 years, versus what we would, would have received was only $800 thousand dollars if the project wasn't built. Ordinance 67-28 is for the sale of a city-owned property formerly known as the Park Plastic Property. This is another project that has been lingering for years and we're happy to announce that the developer, Lionheart, has agreed to pay the city $700,000 uh, and also will pay for the remediation, uh, whereas they plan to build eight uh, two-family houses there. Uh, and we took into consideration our council president who lives in the Eighth Ward. Um, and we didn't want to overburden that area with a large development, so we decided to go with smaller units, uh, which we think will work out just fine there. Both of our Wawa's are also finally moving ahead, located on the corner of Park Avenue and Route 1 and 9, 
along with the Legacy Square location. We anticipate that both will be operational by fall of this year in, in 2023. Um, I'm ready, to, I'm ready to have some Wawa sandwiches and save a couple of bucks on some gas. And speaking of Legacy Square, we anticipate that our LA Fitness located at Legacy Square may be operational by May of this year, just in time for our summer residents. And I think some of us on council could afford to uh, pay a visit to LA Square. At least I, I, I know I need to. So, uh, <laughs> so anyway, guys, that's the end of my report. Um, and uh, thank you all for uh, coming to the council meeting this evening. Oh. Thank you, Mayor. Council Mistrano, you had additional thing to add? Yeah, thanks, uh, uh, Council President. Um, gentlemen, my apologies. I, 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 I didn't do this on purpose. It was just a, a mission that wasn't uh, meant to be. Uh, I want to congratulate our, our, as the Mayor said, Lieutenant uh, Kevin Schulhafer to a fire captain and a firefighter, Eric Toronto, fire lieutenant. If you gentlemen are here, we please stand up and congratulate you. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Okay, we'll now move on to resolutions. This evening we have resolutions 2023-137 through 2023-176. Okay, can we have a motion to approve uh, those resolutions, please? Council President, I make a motion to approve resolutions 2023-137 through resolutions 2023-176 and ask for a second. 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 Oh. Okay. Mrs. Orman. Yes. Javik. Yes. Caldwell. Yes. Mohammed. Yes. Roman. Yes. Strano. Yes. Blaine. Yes. Hudak. Mrs. Yamakaitis. Yes. Okay, we'll move on to ordinances on first reading. Okay, we have ordinance number 6716. An ordinance to amend and supplement chapter two administration of an ordinance entitled an ordinance adopting and enacting the revised general ordinances of the city of Linden 1999. Passed November 23rd, 1999, and approved November 24th, 1999, and as amended and supplemented. Be it ordained by the Council of the City of Linden, Chapter 2, Administration, Article 7, Policies and Procedures, is hereby amended and supplemented. Delete Section 2-69.7, Recreation Fees in its entirety, add new Section 2-69.7. Okay, can we have a motion for introduction of Ordinance 6716, please? Council President, I moved ordinance number 67-16 for introduction and request a second. Second. Orman? Yes. Javik? Yes. Caldwell? Yes. Mohammed? Yes. Roman? Yes. Strano? Yes. Blaine? Yes. Hudak? Yes. Mrs. Yamakaitis? Yes. Ordinance 6717, please. Bond ordinance amending bond ordinance number 6643, finally adopted by the City Council of the City of Linden on July 19th, 2022. Okay, can we have a motion for introduction of Ordinance 6717, please? Yes, Council President, I'd like to make a motion to introduce Ordinance 67-17 and ask for a second, please. Second. Orman? Yes. Javik? Yes. Caldwell? Yes. Mohammed? Yes. Roman? Yes. Strato? Yes. Blaine? Yes. Hudak? Yes. Mrs. Yamakaitis? Yes. Ordinance 6718, please. Bond ordinance providing an appropriation of $59,400 for the acquisition of a Ford F-250 sports utility vehicle with plow and power lift gate for the Division of Transportation and Properties and authorizing the issuance of $56,430 in bonds or notes of the city for financing part of the appropriation. Okay, could we have a motion for introduction, please? Uh, I'm moving 6718 for introduction. You press the second. Second. Orman? Yes. Javik? Yes. Caldwell? Yes. Mohammed? Yes. Roman? Yes. Strano? Yes. Blaine? Yes. Hudak? Yes. Mrs. Yamakaitis? Yes. Ordinance 6719, please. Bond ordinance providing an appropriation of $110,000 for the acquisition of a passenger van for the Division of Vehicle Maintenance and authorizing the issuance of $104,500 in bonds or notes for financing part of the appropriation. Okay, could we have a motion for introduction, please? I move 6719 for introduction and request a second. Second. 
Orman? Yes. Javik? Yes. Caldwell? Yes. Mohammed? Yes. Roman? Yes. Strano? Yes. Blaine? Yes. Hudak? Yes. Mrs. Yamakaitis? Yes. Ordinance 6720, please. Bond ordinance providing an appropriation of $137,500 for the acquisition of firefighting equipment and personal protective equipment for the fire department and authorizing the issuance of $130,625 in bonds or notes for financing part of the appropriation. Okay, could we have a motion for introduction, please? Yes, Council President, I move for ordinance. I move for introduction of ordinance number 67-20 and request a second. Second. Orman? Yes. Javik? Yes. Caldwell? Yes. Mohammed? Yes. Roman? Yes. Strano? Yes. Blaine? Yes. Hudak? Yes. Mrs. Yamakaitis? Yes. Ordinance 6721, please. Bond ordinance providing an appropriation of $140,800 for the acquisition of various items of capital equipment for the Division of Public Works and authorizing the issuance of $133,760 in bonds or notes for financing part of the appropriation. Okay, can we have a motion for introduction of ordinance 6721, please? Yeah, I move 6721 for introduction and request a second. Second. Orman? Yes. Javik? Yes. Caldwell? Yes. Mohammed? Yes. Roman? Yes. Strano? Yes. Blaine? Yes. Hudak? Yes. Mrs. Yamakaitis? Yes. Ordinance 6722, please. Bond ordinance providing an appropriation of $715,000 for various park improvements for the Department's, uh, Department of Parks and Recreation and authorizing the issuance of $617,500 in bonds or notes for financing part of the appropriation. Okay, can we have a motion for introduction, please? Council President, I move for ordinance number 67-22 for introduction and request a second. Second. Orman? Yes. Javik? Yes. Caldwell? Yes. Mohammed? Yes. Roman? Yes. Strano? Yes. Blaine? Yes. Hudak? Yes. Mrs. Yamakaitis? Yes. Ordinance 6723, please. Bond ordinance providing an appropriation of $858,000 for the acquisition of various items of capital equipment for the police department and authorizing the issuance of $815,100 in bonds or notes for financing part of the appropriation. Okay, can we have a motion for introduction, please? Council President, I'd like to make a motion to introduce 67-23 and ask for a second, please. Second. Orman? Yes. Javik? Yes. Caldwell? Yes. Mohammed? Yes. Roman? Yes. Strano? Yes. Blaine? Yes. Hudak? Yes. Mrs. Yamakaitis? Yes. Ordinance 6724, please. An ordinance to amend and supplement Chapter 7 traffic of an ordinance entitled An Ordinance Adopting and Enacting the Revised General Ordinances of the City of Linden, 1999. Passed November 23rd, 1999 and approved November 24th, 1999 and as amended and supplemented. Be it ordained by the Council of the City of Linden. Section 1 that Chapter 7 traffic shall be and the same is hereby amended as follows. 7-33 handicap parking regulations, 7-33.1A handicap parking on street. Add 130 Cedar Avenue, one space, 404 Helen Street, one space, 632 Middlesex Street, one space, 620 Pierce Avenue, one space, and 1521 Winans Avenue, one space. Okay, can we have a motion for introduction, please? Council President, I'd like to make a motion to introduce 67-24 and ask for a second, please. Second. Orman? Yes. Javik? Yes. Caldwell? Yes. Mohammed? Yes. Roman? Yes. Strano? Yes. Blaine? Yes. Hudak? Yes. Mrs. Yamakaitis? Yes. Ordinance 6725, please. Ordinance amending the redevelopment plan for block 254, lots 1 through 10, pursuant to the local Redevelopment and Housing Law, NJSA 40A colon 12A-1 at sequence. Okay, can we have a motion for introduction, please? Council President, I'd like to make a motion to introduce 67-29 and ask for a second, please. Second. Orman? Yes. Javik? Yes. Caldwell? Yes. Mohammed? Yes. Roman? Yes. Strano? Yes. Blaine? Yes. Hudak? Yes. Mrs. Yamakaitis? Yes. Ordinance 6726, please. Ordinance amending chapter 2-25 entitled Department of Community Services by the City Council of the City of Linden. 
This is creating the Division of Information Technology in the Department of Community Services. Okay, could I have a motion for introduction, please? Council President, I make a motion to introduce uh, Ordinance 6726 and ask for a second. 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 Ormond? Yes. Javik? Yes. Caldwell? Yes. Muhammad? Yes. Roman? Yes. Strano? Yes. Blaine? Yes. Hudak? Yes. Mrs. Yamakaitis? Yes. Ordinance 6727, please. An ordinance amending the City of Linden Code of Ordinances to repeal Chapter 26 Flood Damage Prevention, Article 1, Flood Damage Protect Prevention, and to adopt a new Chapter 26 Flood Damage Prevention, Article 1, Flood Plan Management Regulations, to adopt flood hazard maps, and to designate a flood plan administrator and providing for the severability and the effective date. Okay, could we have a motion for introduction, please? The Council President, I move Ordinance 6727 for introduction and request a second. Second. Ormond? Yes. Javik? Yes. Caldwell? Yes. Muhammad? Yes. Roman? Yes. Strano? Yes. Blaine? Yes. Hudak? Yes. Mrs. Yamakaitis? Yes. Ordinance 6728, please. An ordinance authorizing the execution of a redevelopment and sale agreement between Lionheart Development LLC and the City of Linden regarding property located at 940 South Park Avenue, Block 496, Lot 3, pursuant to the Local Redevelopment and Housing Law, NJSA 40A, colon 12A-1 at sequence. Okay, could we have a motion for introduction, please? You. Council President, could I have a motion to introduce 6728 and ask for a second? Second. Ormond? Yes. Javik? Yes. Caldwell? Yes. Muhammad? Yes. Roman? Yes. Strano? Yes. Blaine? Yes. Hudak? Yes. Mrs. Yamakaitis? Yes. Okay. We have an additional ordinance that was added on for introduction this evening, number 6729. An ordinance to amend and supplement Chapter 7 traffic of an ordinance entitled An Ordinance Adopting and Enacting the Revised General Ordinances of the City of Linden, 1999. Passed November 23rd, 1999, and approved November 24th, 1999, and as amended and supplemented. Be it ordained by the Council of the City of Linden, Section 1, that Chapter 7 traffic shall be in the same as hereby amended as follows. 7-33 Handicap Parking Regulations, 7-33.1A Handicap Parking on Street, add 116 East Morris Avenue, one space. Okay, could we have a motion for introduction, please? Council President, I'd like to make a motion to introduce 67-29 and ask for a second, please. Second. second. Ormond? Yes. Javik? Yes. Caldwell? Yes. Muhammad? Yes. Roman? Yes. Strano? Yes. Blaine? Yes. Hudak? Yes. Mrs. Yamakaitis? Yes. Okay, we'll now move on to the public comment portion of the meeting. From comments from the members of uh, the public in attendance on city business only, no personal, political, or derogatory Comments, not to exceed three minutes, please. Okay, uh, we'll start with, um, I believe it's Jacqueline. Isler. Isler, okay. Good please evening. Your name My and address for the record. Isler. <laughs> yes. I live at 425 Helen Street. Okay, go ahead, please. Um, I am also represented here today by some of our fellow Linden Republican committee members. We lost a few due to the, the length of the meeting. However, I do want to be clear and make note that we are here to represent all Linden residents, as the issue at hand is a bipartisan one. According to the Federal Railroad Commission, approximately every two weeks, a train carrying ha hazardous materials derails in the United States of America. In our research, we have come to learn that faulty or missing cross ties beams perpendicular to rails, along with rail debris on the tracks are the number one reason for all derailments. With this, and specifically in speaking about our seventh ward Tremley Point tracks, which transports industrial toxic, toxic chemicals every day through our city, including the approximate 20, 75 tankers sitting full on the Linden Avenue tracks, which should appear to be hidden from you. However, in our investigation, they are equipped with placards indicating they are loaded with 1075 liquid petro petroleum gas. 
what we, what we would like to bring is transparency and awareness to the dangers of these trains in our community, as well as ensuring proper hazard, hazard mitigation measures and plans are in place to deal with a disaster. That is why we are here and that's what we are advocating for today. Um, if permissible, I would like Tim DiMonde to follow me with the following another statement. Thank you. He's on the roster. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for your comment. Okay. Tim DiMonde, please state your name and address for the record, sir. Tim DiMonde, 111 Princeton Road. Uh, today, uh, as we live in a community where we got the largest refinery on the East Coast, uh, we're asking for a, a town hall type meeting so we can address our questions and concerns as to how Linden and Union County really are prepared to handle a hazardous spill. Uh, we all witnessed what happened in East Palestine, Ohio, and how poorly it was handled, along with the string of additional derailments in several other states. We would like to enact our right to know by having our concerns addressed in a formal setting with EPA representatives and skilled first responders president in order to explain their protocol if such an occurrence should happen. In addition, if Linden is not responsible for the upkeep and maintenance of these tracks, and the assurance that all tanker cars are following mandated Federal Railroad Commission and administration guidelines, we would like, we would also like representatives of the companies who are responsible for these requirements present. Once again, we're aggravating for all Linden residents as we should be aware of how such an incident would be handled by first responders and the preventative maintenance, preventative measures that are in place in order to help avoid such a disastrous occurrence in our city. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, sir. Okay. Um, next we have, thank you for your comment, John Kazar. Please state your name and address again for I feel the like record. we need theme music now walking up here. Uh, John Kazar, 23 West Munsell Avenue. Good info, thank you on that. Uh, uh, you know, something, I found something on Facebook over the weekend about a, a class action lawsuit. Uh, just, uh, they reminded me about it, about the Cosmed plant. I don't know, does anybody know about this? No? This you should look it? into that, a class action lawsuit about uh, the, the nut factory or whatever, releasing that ethylene oxide. Um, Anyway, uh, so I just came from Linden High School. They had a really nice program, Drug Trends, Laws, and Treatment. Uh, uh, the, what was it, McPhail, is that his name? Officer McPhail was there representing the Linden Police, a uh, bunch of uh, prevention links. Um, uh, the Ray Lesniak uh, Recovery High School was really good. Um, I, I liked it. Uh, there were a few kids there with their with their parents, and just know that if you you were there with your parent, they, they really love you. Um, congratulations to LHS basketball. Uh, again, another I've been to a game or two in my my life, and uh, another successful season. I just want to treat every day like a, a Linden basketball game. When we're there, nobody cares about politics and all that. We're all there getting along and rooting the team on. Um, I took a few months off, obviously, and I had an epiphany in that time off, and my epiphany was that. My energy just does not mesh with the political scene. It's just not, it's just that the truth does not bode well with politics. Um, I'm just way too real. Me, one of the mayor's other favorite persons, Wally, we're just, we're just way too real. And then there's, um, you know, fake and fraudulent. And the fake and the fraudulent, they have pockets of being able to be real, but for the most part, they're fake and they're fraudulent. The real never can be fake and fraudulent. Um, a very famous Lindenite just posted this on Facebook recently. A politician has absolutely no use for a free thinker. Hashtag think about it. He nailed it right there. Um, I just want it on the record and a reminder that I am still illegally blocked from the Derek Armstead mayor of Facebook page. Um, if Antonelli was here, I would let him know illegally, but he probably wouldn't care to quote my father's favorite saying because he's under the pump. Um, Somebody recent, recently said to you, you know, the mayor hates you. I said, the mayor hates me. Why would he hate me? That's such a strong word. 
I said, maybe he hates that I hold him accountable. Um, you know, sometimes you have to press these people outside of their comfort zone, outside of their protective bubble, which is the council meetings and which is Facebook. And you have to ask hard questions. And what's Wally say when he stutters, he's lying. And I have to thank the mayor, though, about something, because he recently did the same thing. He's validated everything I do here. He recently pressed the governor about what he was talking about with the, 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 the raising of the taxes health, and he pressed him on live TV. And what the governor do? He did what the mayor does to me, block bans and deletes them. He hung the phone up. And the mayor went onto the Linden webpage and he, he wrote this long letter and says the mayor challenged the governor. So Mr. Mayor, I just want you to remember how you felt by being blocked, banned, and deleted by the governor, because that's how you make not 10, not 20, but hundreds of Linden residents feel. I'm just gonna leave you with a quote, two seconds, I'm just gonna leave you with a quote from the quintessential wordsmith of the modern era, Mr. Marshall Mathers. Since I'm in a position to talk to these kids and they listen, I ain't no politician, but I kick it with them a minute. You see, they call me a menace, and if the shoe fits, I'll wear it, but if it don't, then y'all will swallow the truth, grin, and bear it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay, can we have a motion to close the public comment portion of the meeting, please? I'd like so to moved. make a motion to close the public comment. Second. Yes, for a second. second. Orman? Yes. Javik? Yes. Caldwell? Yes. Mohammed? Yes. Roman? Yes. Strano? Yes. Blaine? Yes. Hudak? Yes. Mrs. Yamakaitis? Yes. We had nobody else signed up for public comment. Can I, can I suspend the vote? We have already, we already closed the public comment. I didn't you know, have maybe to sign the sheet. Mm -mm. No. Can I do a follow up question? A comment? No, we don't have that. Okay. We, we already we just, closed the public we portion closed it. of the meeting. Okay. Okay. Uh, comments from members of the uh, council? Anyone on the dais yeah. wish to speak? Yes. Yes, I just, I want to congratulate the uh, police officers on their promotions. Um, I have the um, privilege to work with uh, Captain Sanchez on the IT committee, and I'm very happy that he got the promotion. He's approachable, he's respectable, and um, he deserves it. And I also want to basically um, congratulate the uh, fire captain, Kevin Schaefner. 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 They can't hear you, Councilwoman. Oh, they can't hear me. I, I just said I wanted to congratulate uh, the fire captain that just got promoted. And I also wanted to say congratulations on your marriage, um, Councilman Roman. <laughs> and you'll soon find out what it is to be a parent. <laughs> yeah. OK. Thank you, Councilwoman. Councilman Muhammad? Yes, I was just in congratulating Lieutenant Robert Sanchez to police captain and uh, an outstanding man, and also Sergeant Rivera to police lieutenant. This is a great thing. And we should all applaud law enforcement in this country. We should applaud the district attorneys in this country. They're doing a phenomenal job. And we should stand behind the Constitution of these United States as the foundation of civilization, as the world creeps towards fascism and other types of things, I'm happy to say I am grateful to be a citizen of the United States of America, and law and order is the must of the day. Let's respect the law and order, and let's make it the standard for life in America. Okay, Councilman Javik, go ahead, please. Yes, Council President, I uh, just want to congratulate all the uh, promotions that took place tonight and also to all our, our new retirees. Thank you, sir. Okay, um, Councilman Blaine. Uh, I, I forgot to mention uh, earlier, it, it was mentioned, but I want to mention the Home Improvement Program. Um, it's a one-time grant for seniors to fix your home up, to do some renovations. Uh, it's if you qualify for this program, it's $10,000 free. Please take this number and just inquire, 732-507-2004. Once again, it's a 
one-time grant to fix your home up for all the seniors that qualify it is free so the number again is 732-507-2004 and congratulations john roman in your marriage best of luck to you okay councilman roman thank you council president uh, i appreciate everyone's uh thanks and mr strown's condolences next to me um I want to congratulate our firefighters. Uh, the Turons and the Schulhafers are two names that I have had the honor of growing up with throughout the years in the firefighters, um, besides them being firefighters. Um, also, I want to congratulate uh, Joe Rivera, who I've known for decades at this point, um, who, who's I've known for decades, Mr. Sanchez, Captain Sanchez, who I've worked with as well, and also John Condor, who is a great sixth order. Um, growing up on Woodlawn. Your parents would be proud, brother. Uh, I also want to just express to the people, uh, we closed the, the Robert, Robert's Rules, doesn't allow us to open that back up, so we apologize. It weren't, the names weren't on the list. Sorry, Craig, but I'll stay after if you want to talk to me for anything uh, regarding what you wanted to say. And last but not least, absolutely not least, um, our former Board of Education member, uh, Dawn Beviano, who's also a stalwart in our library, uh, she really loves that library. She's, uh, she's fallen ill, and she can use a lot of prayers tonight. So um, we all have worked with Dawn. We all know Dawn a long time, and uh, prayers to her and her family tonight. Thank you, Council President. Okay. Thank you, Councilman. Okay, I wanted to make mention also, it was brought up about um, the trains and the refinery. Councilman Strano and I have sat on the um, community advisory panel with the refinery. We have many city officials, our fire department, our police department. Um, we meet quarterly at the refinery, discuss issues like this. And safety is not something we take lightly in Linden. Um, there's a lot of um, information given out at these meetings. You know, um, they do not want any incidents. So they take the safety of our residents very seriously, and that's why they have this community advisory panel. I don't know, if Councilman Stratum, you want to add anything to this? Well, I, I, I've been on that advisory panel since the inception of the, uh, since it was developed, and it was, uh, gee, that was a way long time ago when uh, right to know laws started, came into play, and um, uh, Councilman Crane at the time and I uh, were both the original, both original members of it, and, and we asked those hard questions that the people are asking. And, um, you know, sometimes they squirm in their seats. We're, we're not there as cheerleaders. We're, we're definitely there uh, looking out for the residents, and we're trying, what they're trying to do is uh, take down that cloak, uh, that, uh, uh, I should say, invisible cloak that there's a fence around the refinery, and, you know, nothing should go in and nothing should come out. They're trying to be transparent with the uh, populace, and there are safeguards and communication um, uh, in place with our fire department and our police department. And if anybody really wants to d dive into it, you they just pick up the phone and, and ask somebody in the police department or OEM or the uh, fire department, and they'll get that information that they're looking for. Everybody would be easily, uh, I shouldn't say easily, but uh, clearly uh, communicated with in the event of an emergency. That is not something that's been, um, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, shoved under the carpet. That is something that's out there and it's real. Okay, the community advisory panel, as it's called, or the CAP, consists of Elizabeth, Linden, Rawway, uh, Staten Island. Yeah. So they have representatives from all these communities who meet. So Councilman Strano and I will go back to the CAP and share your concerns with them, and I'm sure uh, they will probably set up a meeting of some type well, to address it. Okay. All right. Um, that concludes uh, our comments from the governing body. Unless, Mayor, you have anything? Okay. The next council meetings will be as follows. Conference, conference meeting Monday, April 17, 2023, at 6 p.m. in the council conference room, City Hall, 301 Northwood Avenue. Council conference meeting prior to the council meeting, Tuesday, April 18th at 6 p.m. in the council conference room, City Hall. Council meeting Tuesday, April 18th at 7 p.m. in the council chamber, City Hall. These meetings will be held in person. Can we have a motion to adjourn, please? Council President, I have a motion. Council President, I have a motion.
Orman? Yes. Javik? Yes. Caldwell? Yes. Mohammed? Yes. Roman? Yes. Strano? Yes. It's clean. Hudak? Yes. Mrs. Yamakaitis? Yes. Have a good evening, everyone.